I met my wife Moira at university, September 1972. Uh, we got married in 1978, uh, 1995, so the kids were early teens. I can remember it to this day, uh, sunny day in the garden, Moira was sat in a chair and she just said, ooh, I think I can feel something in my breast. She had a lumpectomy, she had the glands removed and everything looked clear and fine. So we were upbeat, we'd, uh, we'd overcome this, that was fantastic. She went back about six months later for a checkup, um, and they'd identified calcium deposits. So she then had a mastectomy and chemo. And it seemed every time that we thought we'd turn the corner and we're on top of this, the damn thing came back again. She had then got secondaries in her liver and her abdomen had swollen up massively. And um, she was taken in for, uh, to have all the fluid drained off. And she told me what skirt to bring in for her. And she said, if this fits me, I know it's worked. If it doesn't fit, I know it hasn't worked. I know that's it. This was the Friday night. Brought the skirt in and it wouldn't fit her. Weekend, she seemed fine. It was a bank holiday Monday and on the, the Monday, her parents were down, well, her father was down, her mother had died the previous year. So I got an ice cream and she was eating it and she just said, um, I can't hold it. I can't hold this in my hand. And she started to go a bit faint. So we took her upstairs to bed. We had her in bed and just sat and talked and she drifted off into a coma throughout the afternoon. Her dad was there. That was so hard for him. Lost his wife the previous year. And he was now watching his youngest daughter die. They just sat and held her hand all afternoon. They went off. And I just sat with Moira all evening. And about 11 o'clock, she just drifted off and died in my arms. <sighs> hardest thing, the hardest thing I've ever had to do was to tell Dan, Liz and Joe what had happened. The next morning, I found four letters some point over the weekend. She'd written letters to all four of us, still got them, most treasured possession. And that morning in the shower, I just curled up in the bottom of the shower and wept. It took a while to realise what was happening. I'd be driving to work and just in floods of tears, suddenly find myself in floods of tears. But I had no outlet for all that rage and anger, frustration, guilt. I let this happen to her. How could I? How could I let that happen to her? most important person in my life. The kids struggled massively. To this day now, they're in the 30s, um, and it's, it's there, it's affected them, it's scarred them. One of the things that I know with the three of them, they've all struggled to form relationships. Whether it's connected to what happened to the mother, I don't know. Looking back, the treatment that Moira went through, the care she got was fantastic. But the treatment, the surgery, mastectomies, 
the operation on a leg. It's actually pretty brutal, barbaric stuff. The chemo was very heavy duty stuff. If there is anything, anything that can be done that's going to prevent anybody in the future having to go through what Moira's been through, what I've been through, what my children have been through, if we can do anything to prevent this, then that is money well spent in my book.